annual ABC 27 Weather Almanac is now available. No need to leave your home. This year's almanac is exclusively online. Go to abc27.com slash almanac to find weather predictions, short videos, articles, print pages directly from your device. All prepared by your ABC 27 most accurate local forecast team. The 2021 Weather Almanac is available whenever you want it. New content will be added throughout the year. Your same great weather content. Now more accessible. abc27.com slash almanac for everything weather. Live from the ABC 27 Digital Now Center, this is Beyond the Forecast with your most accurate local meteorologists. Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Brett Thackeray here with uh, Dan Tommaso, meteorologist as well. And we are uh, talking about this storm that has uh, had everybody's attention here over the last couple of days. Uh, Dan, a lot of folks talking about it, talking about snow, and there will be snow tomorrow. But here's the screaming message, if you will, from me. We're running into the same problems we tend to run into here with snow events in March. And the number one problem, I'm looking at it right now outside of our newsroom here at ABC 27. We have these big windows. You can't quite see it here, but uh, basically I'm looking at blue sky, sunshine, Brett. Temperatures have been, again, cold to start this morning, but sure. temperatures have been rising with each passing hour here yes. so far on this Friday. It's going to be a very warm setup ahead of this storm. Absolutely. And, in fact, we're going to see this start as rain and then transition over to snow. And we'll talk about that uh, coming up here in just a bit. Dan, that's where I think we should start. Let's show the yeah. folks how nice it is. Uh, this is Mannheim, and it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, and look at wow. the temperature, 49 degrees. Yeah. Good so, stuff. Clouds will increase yes. as the day goes on. But yep. for right now, the longer we stay this sunny, and it's 11 a.m. We will likely overachieve. And the one thing I worry about overachieving with warmth, I mean, it's great on our Friday that will be warmer than possibly expected. However, as that happens, the models take into account what's happening outside. Right. And so if all of a sudden we're getting warmer than expected, guess what? That could start impacting forecast heading into tomorrow. So yep. trends are so important. To they are. And I think a lot of people have asked why we've been a little low with our snow numbers. And quite frankly, we're following the guidance. Yeah. And, and interpreting uh, the guidance. And interpreting mind. it. We, we know what the calendar says. We're almost to St. Patrick's Day. Absolutely. And so, so again, here's here's our current satellite radar picture when you get this much sunshine. And it looks like to me, we probably have maybe six more hours of this. Potentially, oh, yeah. Even I think before it's gonna be the, we head into the evening. The clouds you see on there are pretty thin, too. Now, you can see some of the rain out ahead of it. And yes. once that moisture starts to hit, it's been snow for most of the Midwest. But once that starts to move in here, uh, we're just going to see it start as uh, rain. 52 in York wow. and Lancaster right now. Wow. I could definitely see some of our southern tier counties getting to 60 today. And so, again, that's all playing into the forecast. You're calling for a high officially of 58 degrees. Again, those increase in clouds. Also very important today is the winds out of the south. If they tend to overachieve as well, bringing yep. in some of the warmer air. Warm advection. We'll continue to see that warm advection play a role. And then tonight, yep. temperatures again, very critical. Now the average low is 32, but the valley, so into Dauphin, York, Lebanon, Lancaster, there will be some cold spots. But in general, the farther east and southeast you go will likely be above 32 degrees. And we have seen that in some of the high resolution kinds. They even have the numbers as high as 38, 39 degrees right. tomorrow morning as the snow begins. And, and that's the, the same issue we ran into on Wednesday. Right. And so while above us, we will see the change in the atmosphere. There is yep. no doubt. It will get colder yes. above us in the atmosphere. But just as important what happens at the ground and the ground tends to lag behind that cooling process 100 percent. so there's the front it extends yep. all the way from the great lakes down into missouri and it, quite frankly all the way into the panhandle of texas yeah and it's a little hard to see here but that is a band of snow mixed in with the clouds so again on this map clouds are gray brighter yep. whites that's snow so there is a cold side of this there is oh, no yeah. doubt but then look off to the south too this is what happens in these types of systems there is yet another piece or disturbance that's going to ride along this front and that's what really brings in a lot of the moisture for tomorrow and let's show you the front you can see it on the temperature map uh well we'll zoom in first to exactly what you were talking about that's the cold air missouri illinois Indiana getting the snow today. But if we widen out the picture and show you the front, these are the wow. highs today. Look at that. 50s, 60s, 70s out ahead of it. 85 in Tampa. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then 30s bef behind it. Right. So that, that that's an impressive drop-off. It is. And this time of the year, that's what it's all about. You know, we often talk about what makes weather, what drives weather temperature differences. Yep. It is a big deal. And during these transitional times of year, 
we can get some pretty large storms and out. And you know what else uh, happens when there's a big temperature difference? Wind. Yes, yes. And so there will be a lot of wind kind of amassing behind this as the front rolls through. So let's take the folks through here our timeline today. Today's easy. A lot of sunshine, though. Clouds will eventually increase. And then overnight, this is when the rain starts when most of us are asleep. So a lot of us, because it's a Saturday, too, we won't see the rain. Right. We're going to wake up to it snowing. I think it starts to snow by around 6 a.m., and then it overspreads us. A, a pretty intense band yes. of snow from about 6 a.m. through noontime. Yep. And there you can see it, Dan. But watch what happens. By noon, it just kind of poof. It disappears. It's gone. Yep. And then we turn really windy, and then the temperatures really start to drop. Yeah. As it snows, it is going to get colder. Right. It, it will get colder. But keep in mind, too, that when it starts precipitating, so yep. whether it is rain or snow, temperatures tend to stay somewhat stable. They hit yes. a saturation point, yep. and then it stays pretty stable overall. So this isn't going to be an immediate crash, but throughout the day, it's going to crash. And again, the larger story here, too, is it's going to be a wintry weekend. We've got the snow on Saturday, the wind. Temperatures dropping off on Sunday. There's going to be a clipper to our north that swings on through. Maybe a few snow showers, and it's going to stay windy and cold. Right. Highs only in the 30s. So tonight, really, 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., this is going to start as rain. Temperatures will be above freezing. There's almost no doubt about that now. And then between 6 a.m. and noon, a steady snow. The temperatures drop. There's going to be a slushy accumulation. Snow showers continue into the afternoon as this thing shuts off. It turns quite windy. Wind gusts over 40 miles an hour. And by the afternoon, that's when I think we will drop into the 20s. Yeah. Now, a couple of factors to keep in mind. You're seeing this and you're thinking, okay, when can I travel? When can I do my errands? If you do wait to the afternoon, yeah. there's no more snow. The wind will help dry things out. When it's yep. windy like this, it helps to dry off the roads. Plus... I was driving yesterday and even this morning. I'm just noticing how much material is still on a lot of the main roads. Yeah. So we're not talking about bedlam here. We're not talking about gridlocked roads because of snow. No. If, I do it, think the main roads are going to be relatively unaffected. Yeah. I, I think with some slush, too, on the side roads. Listen, if you're somebody that doesn't mind driving in two to three inches of snow and you are uh, you need to get out somewhere and you use caution, you're, you're going to be just fine. Just, I, I do think for the most yep. part we avoid the worst of this. This is the critical thing. Play it out here because yep. I think we at least get into the mid-50s. I think some of us get close to 60 today. I do, too. But this is critical. Watch. We, we've talked about this before, Dan. Does the cold air just rush in here? And here is when we start to see the changeover. To mm -hmm. Look at the temperatures. I Talk about this because I think that you've really kind of hinted at how important this is. This is so critical. So, again, cold air will flood in first over our heads. That's why we're going to see that changeover from rain to snow. But we can't forget that we live in an area, whether it's Mifflin, Juniata, Perry, Franklin, western parts of Cumberland, South Mountain, mountains block cold air from immediately streaming in and the models tend to struggle with this yes models always make it too cold too fast and yep. we're starting to see that being picked up what i don't like seeing if you're a snow lover is 41 degrees in lancaster yeah as that change at 6 a.m tomorrow at 6 a.m that's yeah. not a good sign no because again roads are too warm even the grass the trees everything it takes time to cool off yep during a storm like this and so starting out that warm and then notice it's pretty marginal near 32 as yep. the snow is falling down. And I would venture to guess this is a little bit too cold. Well, I, I think it's too fast yep. with the cold air. Right. I think by by 3 p.m., 4 p.m., we're in the 20s. Right. That may be too fast, but then watch watch what happens yeah, here. Now this, this is real. At nighttime, yeah. by yeah. the time we get to Sunday morning, it is going to be in the teens. Yep. So what did we learn about yesterday morning? If there is anything left over yeah. in terms of moisture it in the air, could get it, slick. it can create a glaze. Now, yep. does that mean everyone's going to see a glaze of ice? No, but just keep in mind, it's going to drop off significantly in yes. a Sunday morning. So you yep. have any early church services, you're driving a distance, may want to keep that in mind. Yep. Now, one of the things that the guy shows now, this, this particular model is pretty uniform, mm -hmm. uh, maybe three to four inches. And I think you shave off a little bit because, as we just showed you, even when it's snowing, it's going to melt, right. especially at first. Right. So if you take off a couple of inches here across the board, then you can understand where we're coming from. But there has been kind of this eastward yep. jog of a heavy snow band. So I know we were talking last night and this morning about how a lot of us would see a coating to two inches and maybe more in the mountains to the north and west of Harrisburg. But now it looks like that band has shifted to the east. And that's the big change as we head into this afternoon. We, we've seen it from all of the high risk right. guidance. It's exactly. kind of did, a, as you call it, a windshield wiper effect all the way to the eastern part of the state. Now, we're, we're quibbling over a couple of inches here. But and it doesn't matter because where is the right. heaviest snow set up? Right along the front. Right. Right along the front. So let's show them the new map. And you could see 
what we're talking about. How we didn't really increase our numbers no. per se, and we had to add kind of a contour over South Mountain. Some of the mountains we saw Newville did very well, for yep. example, in exactly. Western Cumberland County yes. on on Wednesday. Elevation could matter. Elevation matters, but this whole thing has kind of shifted. So on the back side of this, once it changes over to snow, the weaker side of the storm is behind the front. And by the time it really gets snowing in some of our western counties, there's not going to be enough moisture. Exactly. And so where, what we look for in these types of situations is where is the best lift? Addis talks about dynamics a lot. The best dynamics are along the front. Yep. Unfortunately, the front kind of skips over the mountains to the west in the latest guidance. And I'll, I'll be honest with the viewers here that the margin of error here is very small. We're talking about a band that may be 50 miles wide. There's a distinct possibility this goes east into the Philadelphia television market and skips us entirely. Yeah, yeah. And then we just, have to wait and see. You know, we wake up and there's there's not much to be had here. Or some of us in eastern New York, northern Dolphin, Lebanon, Lancaster County, get four inches of snow. Right. We're going to have to watch. Either way, by Sunday afternoon, and especially in the Saturday Monday, afternoon, you mean, or Sunday? It's gone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as soon as the sun comes out Sunday, as soon as the sun's out Monday, poof. It's not a big deal. See you later. And there's no school tomorrow. It's a pretty right. low-impact event overall. But it is going to be snowing steadily at times tomorrow morning. That's right. the There key. will be bursts. And, again, yep. those bursts will be called thump snow. Yep. It lowers visibility. It can add up quickly. But, again, we're talking about March, not January and February. There is a difference. Big difference. All right. Now let's talk about the winds. That's the second part of this storm. Notice the winds tonight. They start to pick up ahead of the front, but notice the arrows. They are mm -hmm. coming in from the south. And then as we move into tomorrow, a, a big-time shift, a north wind, that's what's going to bring in the cold air. And that matters a lot. So, again, what does that mean? Cold air will be back on the move. How fast it gets here is still in question, but it still will be windy tomorrow afternoon. Yep. And keep in mind, that can lead to some sporadic issues, whether it's power outages or trees and that Correct. sort of thing. So, well, You know, I, I put on my social media there, and, and you're at Doppler Dan on, on Twitter, but one of the things people were writing me about, a lot of kids are going back to college. Spring uh, breaks over, and they're nervous about that morning sure, thump. Sure. So, again, take it easy. If you have to leave, it's only going to be a few inches of snow. And, again, a lot of it may not stick to the main roads. And wait till the afternoon if you can. Yeah, you afternoon know, time. Especially if you're traveling west, wait till the afternoon. It, yep. You'll run into cold and wind, but... Let's go to the three-day because this is, as always, a roller coaster ride. Then yep. we'll wait. You, you, you'll watch at noon the seven-day because it does improve next week. But 58 today, mm -hmm. some of us may hit 60. And then tomorrow, that rain really coming overnight now. You know, the times have shifted up. So I think tomorrow morning when you wake up, it's going to be snowing, windy, temperatures around 32 degrees as the snow starts. And then we go all the way into the teens to near 20 Sunday. Yep. And then it's going to be chilly Sunday, 38. The normal high right now is, I think, 49 or 50. So it's going to be cold on Sunday. But next week looks much better. Next week looks better, and I, I think this is it. I think this, I think is, this is it, is it. And we've been watching for a long time now um, in the long-range guidance that this cold air was coming. Normally when we see that quick switch, it leads to wintry weather. Can't say, you know, there won't be any other snow showers in the forecast, but right. in terms of widespread accumulating we're really snow. getting into rare territory. I don't think we're going to have to make a snow map again spread. this winter. So, again, some things we're going to be watching for in the next couple of hours – does everything keep shifting east? Does rain become more of a factor versus snow? If things stay warmer longer, that could certainly be the case. So there will be plenty more updates as we go forward today. And, of course, I'm here as you head out this afternoon. I'll be here briefing our chief meteorologist, and we'll have an updated forecast at 5. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Dan, and thank you for watching. We'll see you soon.